What's up, y'all? This is the Back to the Boom Bap Podcast, and I'm your host, Monev 360. And this time I'm I'm with a special guest that this is our second time speaking. You know, um, this is a um acclaimed producer. He's worked with everybody from like Pharaoh Monch, Method Man, like the list goes on, Erica Badu. Um, and what we're talking about today is we're talking about the movie um a Thazagora. It's a it's a short film um, that that this man has music on, you know. So we're gonna talk about um, TV, film, and commercial placements with uh, Lee Stone. So everybody, welcome Lee Stone to the podcast. Yeah, thank you, Mom. Um, thank you for the introduction. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. Yeah, you doing okay? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. good. Good to talk with you again. You too. <laughs> yeah, so so um I just want to go ahead and get right into it. Um like since we're talking about TV and and um film commercial and film and commercial placements and everything, um what are some of the most um important things that you um need to accomplish when you're uh writing beats or you know music um trying to get a, a TV film or commercial placement? One of the main things that I think is important is to have a sound, develop a sound as a producer or artist. Um, You know, there are a lot of platforms now where you can get unlicensed music or, you know, royalty free music, the the claims of that. Um, So it's easy for a director to kind of find anyone and get music for whatever they're working on, film, TV, you know, whatever the the platform is. So when that's the case, you know, when it becomes kind of a saturated market, then it's very important for you to have something unique. You know, if you're using sound packs from, you know, drum broker or any of these places, what are you doing to them to make them unique to your own sound? Because it's, it's not special anymore if it's something that anybody can go and grab. I mean, the director could literally go and grab what they need from right. somewhere. Right, their so, own thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's important, <laughs> you know, to really craft, hone, hone, and that could be a blend of the kind of plugins that you're using, effects that you're using. I give one plugin away. I, I use um, Soothe 2 by Oak Sound is a plugin that I use. And that particular plugin, I use it in a way differently than most people. I use it to give almost a lo-fi sound. Now the concept of lo-fi is okay. everyone is yeah. doing that, but the mm-hmm. approach to it is different. So using the Soup 2 plugin for that gives you a different, unique sound, you know, t- in terms of using a lo-fi plugin like RC20 or, you know, the kind of plugins that most people use for lo-fi. And it's a creative way. So again, you know, just short, um, having a sound is important. The directors are looking for unique sounds or they want generic and they'll get generic on their own. But if they're coming to you, they want something unique. Okay, no doubt. So they definitely must have heard something from from your music, you know, to... um make them want to pick you for the movie so uh so basically my next question is um how did how did this particular placement for um the um Thazagora film come about for you so a Thazagora you know it's a very unique film short film um it's about a phobia a Thazagora phobia the phobia of the fear of being forgotten is where the title comes from Okay. And it's, the director has a very creative eye. Tony Travis from Two Tone Films, very creative eye. And he's always looking for artistic impressions to be brought to his film. You know, he's a very different kind of director and mm-hmm. very unique film. So he knew my music, you know, new catalog and researched me a little bit. We had discussions around it, and as a result of the collaborations, the discussions we had, he saw the vision that I saw for the film musically, and I saw his vision that he wanted to accomplish in terms of the whole visual aspect of it and and the emotion he wanted to get across. So it it worked. It worked well, and um, 
you know, and the film is, is coming along. We're still working on some parts of it, but dynamic, dynamic film. As a matter of fact, there's a crowdfunding for it as well uh, for the marketing side. Okay. You know, so anyway, it's an Indiegogo. So if you go to Indiegogo and look up a Thaz Agora, you can actually become part of the marketing it's of the part film. Of, like, I think they're, part of the, um, yeah. And I think, film. yes. And I think they're, they're also giving away certain uh, pieces of the film. You know, you can actually get a part of the film. So, but so. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, and yeah. so, and it probably just has like different, um, different tiers of whatever you, whatever you support. Yeah, I think it may have that. Like that, like, right. you can get so, certain things, get your name in the credits mm-hmm. or whatever, different things. Yeah. That's, that's so pretty cool. Hopefully people will check it out, you know. So, um, did Tony Travis like reach out to you or did you reach out to him? Like, how did, like, did you end up? Yeah, he up- reached out to me. He reached out to me through the network's you know, I guess I actually forgot how the contact came. I think it was through his manager reached out, but you know, through um, everybody can find everybody now through IG, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you, know, you can find somebody's <laughs> email, you know, and it was that kind of link, you know, so the discussion started and it was really just a match made in heaven. I'm looking forward to having everyone see it. Right, right. Most definitely. All right. And, um, so like once you once you knew that that you were going to be working on the um on the film like um have you seen it is it is seeing seeing a um a movie or whatever it is that you're going to be doing one of the first steps in the process of knowing what tracks that you want to make and how you want to craft it seeing it for me is important and, and speaking to the director about what kind of message should be conveyed in that particular scene, you know, the emotion. Um, and, and, and sometimes, you know, it, you can have a, a contradiction going on. Like you have a director who wants to have the sad scene, but he mm-hmm. wants more lighter music. He yeah, or she yeah. wants lighter uh-huh. music. So, I mean, your initial kind of thinking about it could be in opposition to what the director wants. So it's important to kind of to, to talk first. You know, what, what is this film about? What are you trying to convey in these scenes and work from that place, at least for me? And um, it is really just a, a labor of love to have the music placed and, and uplift the scene or bring it down, whatever, right, whatever right, your whatever, plan is. Whatever. But, but, yeah, Call but it's, it, but that was, yeah, it, it's important for me to see it and, and have the conversation both. Yeah, so even like whether you, whether you see the film or not, it, it, that you have a conversation with the director and mm-hmm. and that you see the vision for what Correct, yeah. what they what Absolutely. they absolutely yeah. And you know when it when it comes to like submitting your music to be placed in TV, film, commercials, like is it usually a um, collaborative effort between you and the client as far as like you're giving each other feedback or you know they're, they're you know how does that work it it does work that way sometimes you know sometimes the commercials in particular they may have an idea what they want they may even give you a, a reference song you know this is the kind of song i want something similar to this and you know you know based on the vibe of that particular choice what they're looking for so it's not so much of a collaborative effort when when that's kind of being done but there have been occasions as well when um they don't really know what they want you can look at whatever the copy is and try different things out and give them alternatives okay yeah yeah so what what kind of what kind of way do you prefer to work do you do you kind of prefer for them to give you a reference track and then you go off of that or like do you like it where they say we kind of got an idea but we want you to bring something to the table and then we'll listen to it and see if we like it like yeah it's it can go either way i guess for me in my heart of hearts i like the freedom of being able to just come up with, with my vision, you know, mm-hmm. and, and see that through. That's probably the, the way I like to work. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah. I could work the other way as well. Because, you know, even in that way, you could still have, there's still flexibility to be creative. Unless they tell you that I want this specifically, I just don't want to clear this particular song. I don't want to have to license that. 
then that's like there's no creativity at all and it's just you kind of just mimicking whatever the reference track was but you know there's usually in the case of if it's like a sample or something like sample or a song you you know like let's say like this baby got back you know something like that where we're doing a um an exercise commercial and we want to use that but we we don't (laughs) want to pay so mix a lot Right. Like, so then, do you, can we go with something that has that same? So what they really want is that song. They just want a, an interpolation, a, a change of that song. Mm-hmm. A different you got to change it so it. you don't don't use the real song. Yeah. 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 And like from from your personal experience um, with submitting um, your music to companies for placements. Um, is it usually that that um, you reach out to them or, or that you reach out to um, um, or they reach out to you? Like, how, how does it how does it happen most of the time? Most of the time, it's them reaching out to me. But there's a caveat to that, you know, so through the years of, of working in music and having requests for licensing and, and different things, you get to meet, make connections, you meet music supervisors, um, you learn about directors that are working on other things. So it's kind of a two part question. It is, it did probably happen for me initially as people are reaching out, but because you get relationships, you stay in contact and they're working on something. So oh, you're working on, mm-hmm. let me know, you know, I got something for that. So then you're kind of reaching out to them in a casual way yeah yeah so it's kind of just kind of growing growing your network getting that first placement and then really maintaining relationships and connecting with people, right you know but you know as i said at the top it's too easy now for people to find music and, and use music from so many i mean everybody in, and their mother has in, in their laptop they have the ability yeah. to make tracks mm-hmm. and put things together so, FL Studio or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. So nobody nobody needs, yeah. you don't really necessarily, you can find music if you if you want to. So if you are looking for a unique sound or a unique approach, then you do need to find those individuals. If you just want like kind of um, regular music, you know, I hate to put it that way, but music that just, you know, it's kind of even temp music that you're putting in that you'll replace or just kind of background something. That stuff is easy. But, you know, I always think about like when RZA did um, the work for Quentin. Uh-huh, Tino, Quentin I think Tino. it was Kill yeah. Bill. Yeah. He did the Kill Bill. You know, like that particular, he was looking for a certain sound. You go to RZA, he went to RZA for mm-hmm. a sound. You yeah. know, and again, you know, Tony Travis came to me for a sound. You know, he knew the sound that I, stuff that I'd worked on. So he wanted a certain thing that wouldn't have worked for just grabbing a track from somewhere, you know? Right, right. I I like, I like that you, you know, you talked about um, building relationships because it seemed like that would be the easiest way of like, then, then, oh, like I'm just sending out, uh, you know, messages to everybody cold and just like, which, I mean, you could do that, but like, you know, when you already have a uh you know a relationship with that person and then they tell you oh okay mm-hmm. i got this movie coming up you know whatever can right you, you know so that's pretty dope mm. this video is sponsored by monev 360 of back to the boom baps drum kit called back to the break beats if you're a boom bap producer you'll definitely want to get this drum kit it has kicks like this snares like this Hi-hats like this, and drum loops or break beats like this. So you can use the drum hits, you can use the drum loops, you can chop up the loops, you can use them as is, you can do whatever you want to do. As a matter of fact, the beat that you listen to right now was made with this drum kit. It doesn't matter what doll you use or what hardware you use, you can use this drum kit. So if you want to make dope boom bap beats, then you got to get back to the break beats. It will be linked in the description or in the pinned comment below. 
And um, like as far as um, as far as placements for like movies and 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 you know TV goes, are there any major differences um, that you notice between like um, when you do beats for rappers and singers or in um, as far as royalties go, what's the differences between those those two types of placements? Royalties. So the licensing play for um, the sync licensing play that you get for the placements, I would say can be just as lucrative, if not more lucrative long term um, as kind of getting a placement with the rapper, you know, or, you know, because here's the thing about getting the, the rapper placement, you have an album that you may or may not get points on, you get your front end back in, you know, however you work out right, your right. particular agreement for payment, um, then you're hoping that the record does well, you know, and you're hoping that out of the 17, 15 cuts on there, that your cut is maybe a single. Mm -hmm. So you're you yeah, so in essence yeah. you're in competition on your own the record itself that you are appearing on you're in competition with the other producers who are on mm -hmm. there to try to get that number one slot because right. of course the single means more streaming you know more downloads you know more of that where the placement for a TV film or um, commercials you know you can depending on your deal. You can request what you want for your all-in license agreement for a short period of time, options to renew. You know, there's a little bit more uh, control and budget. Mm -hmm. and you know, you have a better okay. sense of what your money is going to look like from that. Maybe, okay. At least so it in seems the short like more term. more like of a guarantee of that you're going to get paid a certain amount of what, whatever that you agree on in, in your contract. Yes. And for the most part, you know, my experience has been that they tend to extend the license, you know, and again, you put that in your contract that if it's a, a option to renew after the term, then it's going to be this amount of increase or whatever, because that means that if they want to renew it, the commercial or TV or film, you know, is it, successful. Right, so then, right. Uh -huh. So then you want a little piece of that growth. Yeah, potentially that growth, rather than to be now. Sometimes it could be a work for hire where you you know you just yeah you pay and they pay and that's the the end of it, you know. But that's not the best case scenario. Yeah, you you would want to have your you know something that could be be residual over time. Yeah, so and like re renew that contract. So like when you when you first do um um you get with somebody for um making something like that is is it usually like a kind of like a short term like um exclusivity um contract of them using it for a certain amount amount of time yes that's what you mean by the you know. correct usually it's for like a six month it depends on the campaign there was a, a recent campaign that uh, we did with uh comcast uh -huh. know, that, that was a, a major campaign it was actually a back to school campaign and that particular uh, uh, you know without giving away the too much of the the business right, side, right. it you was know, for a short yeah. term it was for a short term but then it got renewed okay so, that's, that's typically what it is um you know now of course with movies things is you know it's placed and it is what it is but with the commercials you know they get renewed that way and you know you can see your money extend further with movies and tvs you're doing well because what happens is when that gets licensed to netflix or you know mm -hmm. whatever it's else, like it a, um, sync, um sync sync royalties or whatever like uh, i mean the syndication, yeah the syndication of mm -hmm. them playing it over and over mm -hmm. yeah so and like and and what about like for um music producers who um who haven't um who are new or even ones that are established that that haven't done any placements uh with tv film and commercials uh what would you recommend their uh first step be towards land, landing that placement the first step you know going going back to my original discussion about looking for 
a sound, like creating a sound. Just make sure that whatever you're doing has a unique appeal to it. Um, you know, because again, mm-hmm. a lot of the, the placements they're looking for kind of genre specific, even if it's hip hop, you, you know, now we have so many areas within hip hop. So, you know, you want to trap, you want to drill, you want to boom back, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah, lo-fi, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many different yeah. things. So we can get caught up as producers, caught up in just sounding like everything that's out there. You know, I'm going to do everything's going to be slop. I'm going to do all my, my drum, shift my drums and every, I'm going to start every track I do with the snare a little bit off. And then what you're doing is you're sounding a lot like everyone else who's doing that now on YouTube or even right, just making right. beats because that's the thing to do. Like, you know, I want to be, I want to be cool. So I want to sound like everybody else. But the, in the long run, that's not going to be helpful to you because why as a TV film um, commercial director, do I need to pay you if there's a million guys doing else. the same thing, <laughs> doing the same thing? They could so, just go on YouTube and find exactly. a person like, hey, like, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. so it, yeah, so it's important, like, just when you're starting off, just really make a personal assessment, you know, and think, am I really unique in my sound, or am I kind of one in a million? as other people just like me out here? doing the same thing and if that's the case then you got to think okay now here's the thing there's nothing wrong with having um kind of generic sound if that's what you're doing like some people just want a generic i'm a a kind of cookie cut i would be afraid of the the ai because you know ai is kind of pushing that out Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know ai is gonna find it find find that you know that pattern that's that mm-hmm. is gonna pick up on it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so then, if you if you sound like everything else and you don't have a specific sound, and you have the introduction of AI coming in that can kind of, as you said, follow that sound, then mm-hmm. you don't have anything unique you're bringing. So the first step, back to the question, is looking at that you un- creating that unique sound first, finding your own beat voice. What is that? All right you know yeah i think um i think it's i think it's interesting that you say that because like i think a lot of times as producers we have this this mindset where it's like oh man i just i just want something to hit like you know (laughs) with my big break coming but then it's just like you gotta kind of think about your process too like what is your process of actually day in and day out working on your craft getting better like at at even at your music in the first place yeah. before you start like trying to um, get it out there and get get people trying to listen to it, you know. Absolutely. And um, but and also like so, what are what are some of the issues that um, that you can run into with different brands when submitting music to them, and how can you either like avoid um, those issues or like work towards resolving them when they arise? issue so i guess one of the main issues when you're working with brands could be it depends on your, your what you're doing musically like samples of course we know um if you're sampling that's going to be a major issue because nobody's yeah. going to want to <laughs> have to pay to clear the sample there, a quick story i'll share um, there was a show called on the espn called the life life was basically uh-huh. behind the scenes of sport figures you know and the song the original song that was used for the life was uh, my life is all i have the feral Styles Styles P. P. okay yeah, yeah, Styles yeah. P yeah. record you know, <laughs> and, and this kind of opens up this is an introduction to me into doing commercial to, uh, tv mm-hmm. work so they they didn't want to clear that was a, an aretha franklin sample Okay. Know, yeah. That uh, Ayatollah used for that beat. They didn't want uh-huh. to clear the sample. Well, Aretha, no, that, actually, Aretha did not want to clear it. That's what it was. And Aretha uh-huh. said, no, you're not going to use it for the TV. And um, as a result of that, you had this now song, but you didn't have the music to 
go along with it. So I made the music, I took the, the vocals and made a track to it and they used that track for the show. So I was able to get that placement from, you know, kind of So with that, did you, so did you make it, um, I remember hearing another show, but I don't. I don't actually remember how, mm. how it sounded. Did you? Um, did you like make it similar to the to the My Life song, or was it kind of like completely different? Yeah, it was completely different. It was uh, the original was like more or less like a vocal sample with like back like a choir almost Aretha singing and mm-hmm. bass stabs that came in along with like a boom bap beat. I had more of a funk approach to it. It was more of like a straight ahead groove in terms of the drums. Uh-huh. But what was interesting, I used a clavinet to kind of walk, like a walking clavinet, almost like a funky, it, for lack of a better comparison, like um, Superstition by, uh, by Su- uh, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, uh-huh. yeah. It kind of, it was similar, kind of like a plucking, it had a lot of yeah, action yeah. in it from the clavinet, and then it was a four-part, four-bar move, and in terms of the chord progression, so it was different. It was different than it, but it worked. You know, I just played along what felt good with the lyrics, with the the chorus. Yeah. So, so one main rule of thumb is <laughs> stay yeah, away from sampling. samples. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a main issue. Do not do anything. And you mm-hmm. know, and it's funny because I've heard a couple of commercials where I, I clearly hear Bismarck, like his vocal, not well, not even Bismarck, but the song. Um, what's the name of that Bismarck song? Goes I am the original, and that record was so boss. Whatever, like the little uh uh-uh. uh. I heard that in a Taco Bell commercial. You know, so I was like, I wonder did they clear that? Because yeah, I, I they probably they probably had to. <laughs> I, would, I would hope so. <laughs> Me too. I would hope they, they did too. Because it's there. I recognize that, you know, being a producer, but it's just gave it gave it texture. I always wondered that, but yeah, I would hope they mm-hmm. did. Otherwise, they they in for they need to pull it. Because <laughs> yeah. I just gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, it's it when it's when it's for hip hop and it's th- something that we did. I mean, right, we we right. deserve to get paid too. To you know, yeah. like I know I know it's like that for when hip hoppers use you know the Motown um, mm-hmm. singers and stuff. So it works the same way because you know a lot of these um, brands and stuff they they love they love having hip hop on there. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, commercials and stuff. Yeah, so. and hip hop. You know, now that we're coming around to 50 year anniversary yep. you know hip hop is Motown because it's been yeah. you know like, like you know it's, it's not a new music anymore so if you're playing a, a Bismarck record that's you know for somebody who's a teenager that's Motown that's years 100 years ago you know mm-hmm. <laughs> yep <laughs> alright and um and also so like um you know, just wrapping up. Um, could you give us some information on like where and when you know we'll get to see um, a Thazagora? Yes, um, I know. Right now, there's some additional work being done on the film, and as I mentioned, you know, I'm sitting with the director, and we're kind of picking some other things as well for it. But in terms of the final product, um, they are as close. You know, okay. I, I would definitely say before the end of the year. You know, um, as a matter of fact, the film recently, the, the screenplay won a uh, the best film at the Paramount Film Festival, best screenplay. So a lot of energy around this film and because it's dealing with mental health and it's dealing with mental health in a fun way, you know, in a very okay. unique and artistic way, it's definitely something that people are going to want to check out, you know. So I would say at this point, without really having a, a real date, before the end of the year and the music and everything will be all done. Godfrey is in it too. Godfrey, the comedian. Okay. Yeah. I love yeah, Godfrey, he a, yeah. He has a, a <laughs> special part in there and um, prison Bay, the guy prison Bay a few years ago, there was a guy whose mugshot had all of the women going crazy over his mugshot. Uh-huh. So he's actually one of the main characters and he's a person who has the, um, 
what well, early onset dementia. He has early onset dementia. His girlfriend has the uh, that's agoraphobia. You know, mm-hmm. so her fear. She's an, an Instagram and what, model. What, and once again, um, sorry to cut you off. But what what does a, a thasagora mean again? It's the fear of being forgotten. So okay. this this girl, she has the fear of being forgotten. She's insta famous. She's on Instagram with a lot of followers. So she's working hard to be remembered. But then she finds this boyfriend who's the prison bay brother. He finds this boyfriend who has early onset dementia in their 20s. So uh-huh. he is going to forget her. So it's a love wow. story. And it's the push pull of what she does to try to keep him, keep her in his heart. You know, so and, and it's a interesting twist. On, in the movie as well. Okay, that sounds interesting, man. I, I mm-hmm. can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people will, will enjoy it. <laughs> well, I have I've thoroughly enjoyed talking with you again, Lee you Stone. Too. You know, you know, I always learn learn a bunch of things. You know, from having conversations with you, and uh, you know, I always like to ask um, if uh, anyone out there uh, wants to reach out to you for beats or for podcasts or anything like that. Uh, where can they reach you? Instagram is the best place, and at Lee Stone Music is the place. See, I'm ready this time. Yeah, Last okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at Lee Stone Music, you know how to get at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thank you for that again, Mo. Thank you so much. You know, for it's always a pleasure being interviewed by you. I, you know, love your questions. You know, you make me think. And I learned from the process as well. So great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I definitely appreciate you, you know, um, having me to bring you, bring you on again and talk about this and, and promote the film, you know? So, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. You have a great one. Okay, you too. All right. Peace. Peace.